Have you ever wondered why 80% of New Zealand is empty? A fascinating question to ponder, isn't it? New Zealand, a country known for its breathtaking landscapes and the setting for the epic Lord of the Rings trilogy, is home to a population of just under 5 million. Yet the majority of this beautiful land remains uninhabited. Today we're going to embark on an intriguing journey, exploring the reasons behind the sparse population of this island nation. We'll delve into the geographical features, economic factors, and the role of infrastructure and accessibility. Is it the rugged terrains or the economic dynamics that deter people from populating these areas? Or perhaps it's the lack of infrastructure that's the key. As we peel back the layers, we'll uncover the complex factors that contribute to this unique demographic puzzle. So buckle up and get ready for an enlightening ride. Stay tuned as we delve into the mystery of New Zealand's sparse population. New Zealand, a land of picturesque landscapes yet largely empty. Why? This question has puzzled many. So let's dive into the geographical features of New Zealand and how they play a role in its sparse population. Imagine a country where mountains rise like skyscrapers, where rivers carve their paths through valleys and where the terrain is as diverse as it is breathtaking. That's New Zealand for you. But this isn't just about the beauty of the land, it's about the challenges these geographical features present to the people living here. New Zealand's terrain is predominantly mountainous with the Southern Alps running like a spine through the South Island. These peaks, some of which reach over 3,000 meters, provide some of the most stunning views you'll ever see. However, they also pose a significant challenge for settlement and transportation. Building homes on such steep slopes is not just difficult but also risky, and the harsh alpine climate can make life tough. Now let's move over to the North Island. Here, the geography is a bit gentler, with rolling hills, vast plains, and beautiful beaches. But don't be fooled by this seemingly hospitable landscape. This region is known for its volcanic activity and earthquakes, thanks to its location on the Pacific Ring of Fire. Living here means living with the constant threat of natural disasters. And that's not something everyone is ready to sign up for. But it's not all doom and gloom. These geographical features also give New Zealand its unique character. The mountains are home to incredible biodiversity. The rivers and lakes offer endless recreational opportunities. And the rugged coastline is a paradise for surfers and sea lovers. So so yes, while the geography of New Zealand might make it difficult for large-scale human settlement, it also contributes to the country's distinct charm and allure. To sum it up, New Zealand's geographical features are both a blessing and a curse. The terrain is a beauty, but living here is a different ballgame. But geography doesn't tell the whole story. Let's talk money. The distribution of population in New Zealand isn't just influenced by its mountains, lakes, and coastlines, but also by the economic opportunities available. Like in any other country, folks in New Zealand are drawn to places where they can earn a living and afford a comfortable lifestyle. New Zealand's economy is primarily based in urban areas, with cities like Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch offering a wide range of job opportunities in sectors like tourism, manufacturing and services. These urban hubs are where the money's at and that's where people gravitate. But what about the rest of the country? Well, much of rural New Zealand is dedicated to agriculture, particularly sheep and dairy farming. While these industries are crucial to the country's economy, they don't necessarily provide a large number of jobs. Plus, the work can be physically demanding and not everyone's cup of tea. Now let's flip the coin and talk about the cost of living. New Zealand is known for its high cost of living, particularly in major cities. Everything from housing to groceries can come with a hefty price tag. While wages in the cities are generally higher to compensate, this doesn't always balance out, especially for lower income income individuals and families. Moreover, the cost of living in rural areas, while generally lower, comes with its own set of challenges. Fewer amenities, limited access to services, and the cost of commuting to urban areas for work or shopping can add up, discouraging folks from settling down in these parts. So, you see, it's not just about having space to live but also about being able to afford that space and make a living while you're at it. In New Zealand, like anywhere else, these economic factors significantly influence where people choose to settle down. The cost of living and job opportunities play a significant role in where people choose to live. Connectivity and accessibility, a key factor in population distribution. Let's dive into the world of infrastructure and accessibility. It's no secret that these elements play a vital role in where people choose to live. When it comes to New Zealand, it's a tale of two halves. On one hand, we have bustling cities like Auckland and Wellington, brimming with modern infrastructure and top-notch connectivity. On the other hand, we have vast expanses of land that are as beautiful as they are isolated. These isolated areas, often found in the heart of the 
countryside or nestled amongst mountain ranges are not just geographically isolated but also infrastructure-wise. We're talking about places that are miles away from the nearest town or city where the internet is more of a luxury than a given and where public transport is virtually non-existent. Now it's easy to romanticize the idea of living in such places surrounded by nature away from the hustle and bustle of city life, but the reality is a lot less idyllic. Without easy access to amenities like schools, hospitals, and supermarkets, daily life can be quite challenging. And let's not forget about job opportunities, which are far more abundant in urban areas. The lack of infrastructure also extends to the realm of connectivity. In today's digital age, being connected is more important than ever. We rely on the internet for everything, from work and education to entertainment and staying in touch with loved ones. But in many parts of New Zealand, high-speed internet remains a distant dream. This digital divide further discourages people from settling in these areas. So, while New Zealand's natural beauty might make it seem like an ideal place to live, the reality is that the lack of infrastructure and poor connectivity in many regions make it less appealing for settlement. It's a classic case of beauty is only skin deep. When it comes to choosing a place to live, it's not just about the scenery, it's also about practicality and accessibility. The lack of infrastructure and poor connectivity in many regions of New Zealand make them less appealing for settlement. So we have geography, economy, and infrastructure playing their parts, but is that all? Not quite, folks. Let's recap and see how these elements intertwine to shape the population distribution in New Zealand. First off, we dove into the geographical features of New Zealand. We found a land abundant with breathtaking mountains, vast plains, serene beaches, and dense forests. The country's natural beauty is undeniable, but it's also a double-edged sword. The rugged terrain makes it challenging for large-scale human settlement, which explains why a considerable chunk of the land remains untouched. Next, we tackled the economic factors. We discovered that New Zealand's economy heavily relies on industries like tourism, agriculture, and fishing which don't necessarily require a dense population. And while there's an increasing focus on tech and creative sectors, these two don't demand a high population density to thrive. In fact, the country's economic structure inadvertently encourages a sparse population. Then we shifted gears and looked at infrastructure and accessibility. It's one thing to have land, and it's another to make it livable. New Zealand's infrastructure is concentrated in a handful of urban centers, making the rest of the country less accessible. This lack of accessibility further contributes to the low population density. So, we see a pattern here. The geographical features, the economic structure, and the infrastructure all interplay to keep New Zealand's population distribution the way it is. It's not a case of people not wanting to live there, rather, it's a case of how the land has shaped the way people live. And let's not forget, this sparse population isn't necessarily a bad thing. It allows New Zealand to preserve its natural beauty, maintain a high quality of life, and create a unique balance between humans and nature. New Zealand is a land of many wonders but its sparse population is a result of a unique combination of factors. It's not just a land that's empty, it's a land that's waiting to be discovered. And that, my friends, is the story of New Zealand, the land of the long white cloud. 